welcome to uh, the cast assessment for Trinity Falls season five of our minis. I am so excited and here with my new co-host and a new person doing the cast assessment, Alex Trias and Lily Petzl. How are you guys? Oh, I'm doing great. It's a new experience for me being on this uh, video instead <laughs> of uh, my recaps, but I, I think it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm ready to crack into it. <laughs> All right. So we are inviting some guests here today with us, and we're going to start off with the second juror of Eriki Islands, Tom Pratt. So Tom, come on in. Hi, all. How are we doing tonight? Awesome. We're all doing amazing, and we're ready to get started assessing this new cast of people. I, I have to say, I, I feel uh, a little, again, feel weird on this side of the camera. I'm used to being assessed. So, um, so please don't assess my assessment too much. Yes. <laughs> All right. No promises. So, okay. We are going to start off with Lexington Martega. He's 29. Uh, he's an event manager from Seattle, Washington. Yeah, Lex. So big Lex. Uh, tons of personality. This he is going to chew up the screen in a way that I am really looking forward to watching. I'm a little interested to see if he's going to get uh, sniped for chewing up too much scenery. One of those people that uh, let's say that th there are some castmates who are there for reasons other than to win the game, and they might find his uh, infectious personality a little too infectious and feel like he's taking too much of their uh, hard earned screen time themselves. Mm. Yeah, I completely agree. I think another thing about Lexington is he's so positive. You know, he's excited to get into this. And this is a full day of Survivor. So the strategists will want to get him out, just like Tom said. But I think the social players might want to keep him in because he can be that positivity through the game. But he says he's a sprinter. So I'm curious to see if he'll be able to keep up the, um, you know, happiness persona throughout the day. I think he will, but I think that that's going to be a challenge for him because that's how he's going to make those connections. Yeah, I, I personally loved Lexington. Like, he was one of those people when we interviewed him, uh, I, I was like, this this guy has to be on the cast. It's like no matter the result of his placement, I was like, I need this energy in a mini. Uh, his only experience is a long game and, his, the, and he was talking in his interview about how the people who ran his long game want him to play again, but they're like, we want you to see, uh, go play a mini, see how you feel if you're going to play the same way or do you adapt to, and change some things. Because he ended up, I think, in the like middle place of jury phase in that long game, which gives me some hope for a mini where maybe if he now has some experience under his belt, he knows his personality can get him at least to a point, and hopefully – he gets some more strategy behind him to get him a little further than he did in that long game. Yeah. And he is, I think the most excited and prepared for this many. He keeps, he's messages, the DCP Instagram account being like, I'm ready. I'm excited. I've got all my materials and took a picture of him for us. So I am just ready to see him play i really hope he doesn't go early because he is uh, so so excited but that's my worry is also he's so excited that it just might be his downfall yeah so so this time going around i'm gonna ask lily and our guest a specific question here you're gonna tell me is he pre-merge merge boot or deep in the game Ooh, oh I think he is going to be a merge boot. I think if his tribe that he's on through swaps, whatever, if he's able to get past that first vote, make those connections, become the cheerleader, he is going to stay. But he is, like we said, a loud you know, player. He can't hide. And those are the easy merge boots, in my opinion. Yeah. I would say that I, I don't, th I actually would put my stamp on not the merge boot. I think... <laughs> I think that he, I think Big Lex could go like second or third on a pre a, a pre merge boot where the tribe keeps losing and his positivity is getting on people's nerves, or they're worried about he's gonna win in the end, so let's clip him now. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't there's I don't see him being first boot. I think he is way too excited to be first boot. If he goes out first, it's it's going to be because he overplayed with his DMs too quickly. Uh, <laughs> big, Le- big Lex, be careful with the early DMs. Yeah. Don't worry. Safety text. Don't worry Safety about it. Text. Learn from Tom. They, yeah, don't just 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 pump the brakes. You'll be there. You're you're a sociable sociable enough player. Build those bonds and don't need you don't need to make moves. You'll be fine. And then you can figure out what now he he says in his in his notes that his favorite player is Pia from Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, without spoiling Survivor Australia, Pia is good TV in addition to being a fun player. Mm-hmm. And so if you if if you if I hadn't read that from Big Lex, I would have never thought that was that was his favorite player or the player he wanted to play like. Um, that the, the 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 personalities don't jive there. But uh, hey, you know what? Let's let's see what he can do. Awesome. And then we're going to move on to our next castaway in Lydia Dake. She's 26. Uh, she's a grad student from Seattle, Washington. You guys gave me the two Seattle folk. Um, <laughs> Lydia, Lydia brought a really uh, Lydia. Lydia has played in a bunch of minis, it seems. Um, or is it played in a variety of minis as well? Mm-hmm. And so is. I, I always like rooting for people who aren't like entrenched in the org community, but are exploring it. Um, and uh, Lydia also has an awesome cat. So look out in the background for Claudia. Uh, if I could vote Claudia as America's favorite player, I already would. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it when the MVPs come in for the recaps. So we might uh, let Claudia be on the list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think Lydia's a hard one because as Tom mentioned, she has played a lot of games and she even said in her application, she's a quiet player. She lays low until she needs to come out. And I think in most cases that can work, but if you have a loud cast and it's a mini, you only have so much time to scramble. If you don't get those small snippets to get to know these other people before you vote, she could become an easy target pre-merge. Um, Another thing that I noted is she said one of her biggest pet peeves was indecisiveness, which can be helpful maybe in this format. She can be the one to throw out the names, but also that definitely rubs people the wrong way because before you can trust someone, you kind of got to do that back and forth of like, well, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? And so it can either go with, you know, she knows what she wants and people will get behind her or it might come off in the wrong way to some people in the scramble rooms. Yeah, uh, spoiler just for the remainder of this five. I'm high on the whole cast because why wouldn't <laughs> I be? I helped cast them. Uh, Lydia, what I really enjoy about her is uh, there's a vibe that I get when I was talking to her during the interview that I felt like if I was playing with her, I would mesh with well. Like th- this is someone that I would want to work with. And I feel like if that's something that I'm gauging, I would have the opinion that there's going to be several people on this cast that would have a similar mindset, at least initially. Um, I, with her Dungeons and Dragons like hobby that she enjoys, I think that also involves creativity and adaptiveness. Like you constantly have to figure out what you need to do. And in Survivor, you need to figure out how to weave that lie within truth. I feel like having a background to with hobbies that allow you to be imaginative and intuitive, I think that benefits her. She has a widespread um, experience in minis. And I feel like she also has some decent stuff in terms of like mental type of comps with like puzzles and things that could come up that could be provided as useful tools for a tribe that she's a part of early on. Uh, so I'm very interested to see if she can sink or swim. How about this for a hot take? She's either going to be top three or bottom three. I don't know which one, but it's going to be I'm one. Great. So, um, One interesting thing that she noted in her application about why she was applying is she wanted to play another face game. Uh, So that means she's been dealing probably with a lot of text based games and there is zero messaging in our games. So that could really hinder her maybe moving moving forward in the game if she relies more on a a text because a lot of games also are a combination of like zoom and facebook messenger or zoom chat whatever you want to use but we have none of that and you have to rely purely on your social skills which the cat will probably help with but (laughs) (laughs) if if claudia doesn't get enough screen time 
Uh, cast messed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now for both of you, you both made that bold claim. But I'm going to put your feet to the fire right now. You guys said bottom three or top three. Give me one. Ooh. I say top three. Uh, we saw the winner of Sahara Dunes, I feel like is probably similar to Lydia and she laid low entirely through pre-merge. And then we saw her kind of pick up, she became adaptive. And I think if Lydia can play that adaptive role, um, you know, kind of what Alex talked about, I see her going to the top three because people won't think of her until it's too late. She also has the same random survivor player as a top three in Kylie Scruggs. So <laughs> there's 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 things working for her. You know what? I'll I'll she's gonna take it. I actually I I here's what I say. I don't actually see her losing a final jury vote. And so if I think she's gonna be top three, she's gonna win it. Ooh, all right. I love this. I love this. Thank you guys for playing my little game. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Tom, for talking about these two castaways. It's been a blast. I'm excited to see uh, this next season. You guys, you kill it. Let's uh, let's go. All right. Thank you. And we will bring on our next guest. Our next guest to review our next two uh, castmates uh, is from Sahara Dunes. He is one of our runner-ups. It's Eric Barnes. Eric, come on in. How's it going, guys? Thanks for having What's me. What's up? Doing great. I'm, I'm ready I'm excited to, to talk about this down. cast because they're all awesome. Yes. Yeah. So let's break down the first person. Uh, first person is Amaya Thompson. She is 21. And um, we actually found her through uh, DCP Insta. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but with that, we are going to keep moving forward with our next contestant, and that is V. Ellen. She is 27 year old uh, eating disorder therapist from Dallas, Texas. Eric, your thoughts on V? V was so fun to watch her interview because she is admittedly like a little all over the place, but in the best way possible. I feel like she has so much going on, which I think will be a good thing because she's she does pole dancing. She does swing dancing. She is a therapist. Like there's so many different aspects to her that I think that she's going to be able to re relate with like so many different types of people, which is what you need to do in a minute. I completely agree. Watching her interview, uh, as Alex said, like I adore all these people. I was <laughs> like, she seems like a blast. I would want to keep her around, but she does tend to um, take up the screen. And as we talked about before, you know, somebody that takes up the screen can become a target easy early on, excuse me. I mean, she seems like she likes to share a lot. She even said in a, in a previous game, she, you know, was the gossip. She found herself oversharing, which isn't always a bad thing. And you don't have a lot of chance to do that in a mini, but could kind of um, come around to bite her if you don't, if you're not like keeping track of what you're kind of saying to everybody. And the last thing I noted is that she said in her interview, she's a little gullible, but I, it's, I think she's going to learn from that. I don't think she's going to be as gullible or as oversharing, but if that's kind of your personality, then that will trickle through in your game. The later on it goes because you get tired. Like this is a tiring process and it's hard to keep up something that isn't you in the game. Yeah, agreed. And I, my only concern is what Lily said is um, the word salad of it all. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I loved it personally. Like, this is like be someone who I feel like I could just have like a non game based conversation with for like hours on end and just like never be bored because she just has so many things to say. And I was here for all of it. Uh, obviously, in a fast paced game, you have to sort of be able to keep things a little more succinct. So we'll have to see if she's able to do that. Uh, and like bring that energy that she has and like bring it down to like a notch. Uh, but other than that, like she has like an org uh, game under her belt. She's been spectating a bunch of games. So like she's going to be coming in with a idea of things to expect during the game, which could give her a benefit over some people that could be like freshly new to this or have been out of the game for a while. Um, I, I, I love her energy. I feel, I feel like she has a great story behind her. Uh, if they let her get far, like I feel, um, I also think she could be very good or also very bad at Final Tribal, <laughs> depending on how 
the answers are. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in this application, we asked uh, con potential contestants to uh, say what survivor player they would hope to play like and who they think they'd actually play like. And she said uh, she'd hope to play like Jeremy and Mike White or Mike White, but feels like she would actually uh, play more like Sugar. And while Sugar's not the worst, it's also not the best. So um, I hope she can kind of navigate her way in the game and like make some moves and have solid alliances rather than just be the one who's like mm -hmm. kind of being brought. Well, well, if she's Sugar and that's like her story arc, we're going to get one of two things. One uh, she's going to make a deep run. Or two, she wins a portion of a challenge and flips people off, and I'm here for either. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, Lily and Eric, once again, is she pre-merge? Is she a deep run? Or is she a merge area boot? I think she's a merge area boot. I'd love to see her go all the way, but I think, I don't see her going pre-merge. I think that you know, people that kind of take up the screen and do well in challenges are not going to be pre-merged. I think that once they get to the merge and breakout rooms are happening and if she can't um, give space to others, which is hard if you're a big personality, I think she could be around a merge boot. Yeah, I'm very torn. I, I'm like the opposite. <laughs> I think she's either going to go early because like you said, she might take up too much room in the conversations and might get targeted. Or I feel like if she makes it to merge, she could be kind of set and she could go pretty far. I feel like she's, I mean, she's a therapist. So think Denise Stapley, right? Um, she's going to be able to find common ground with like lots of different people. Um, but I think, again, in a mini, it's like probably very different from a long game. If you are able to make these connections. And even if you are taking up more of the conversation, it's so fast paced, but you'll, you'll be the one who's able to put the plan in motion first. And if people like you and they listen to you and they like your plan, then maybe they'll just go along with you. So I don't know, I could see it going either way. So it's really hard. I just, even though she is dominating a bit in terms of like how much she takes up screen time, maybe I feel like she's very disarming. She's like, a little bit of like a dingus in the in a good way again like she keeps saying she kept saying sorry and i thought it was like really sweet and and charming so who knows you go either way well that is the ellen uh eric thank you so much for coming in and assessing these two castmates uh we are looking forward to seeing both of them play but now we're going to move forward to our next guest to analyze our next contestant. Our next guest with us is the winner of our first long game, Exile Island. It's the one and only Alex Cousins, recent graduate. Oh, no way. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Good to see y'all. Glad to see have you, you here. All right, so we are going to be talking about Ben Horn, uh, 24, he is a medical professional and lives in Indiana. So Alex, what do you think about Ben? I really like Ben. I like Ben's chances. I, um, he seems like really well-rounded, which I always like, and you always want to look for in these kind of games. Um, and, you know, hearing that he's a winner, um in a different org you know is definitely a plus for sure he knows how to make it to the end and he knows how to win um and that's really important the question i have is threat management he comes across very intelligent and he's a gamer and i feel like he will want to make moves and want to cut people and the question is will he get the timing right um, that best suits him. I think that's my hesitation with, you know, a super strong winner pick is, you know, will he be able to put the pause button when the time's not right for a move? Um, he talked about using, you know, he always wants to keep people in front of him using shields, but then we'll cut the shields. So, you know, I like hearing that, but yeah, when, when, you know, at what point is he going to cut them? And then is, does he become the big target? Cause he, 
he just comes off, you know, and I think people will catch on. He's very charming and he seems very likable and he'll probably be pretty good at challenges. So I think he, I'm definitely seeing merge for sure, but it could be early merge. You know, if he's on, ends up on the wrong side of the numbers, he may be seen as a threatening person. I definitely agree with you, Alex. I could see him easily being the merge boot because he's smart. He comes off smart. Um, I think if he's able to kind of dial it back, just like we said, threat management, he might be able to make it far, but he is very easy, easily likable. And I think that is intimidating in this type of game, because if you don't catch him at the right time, then you don't know what he's doing, which makes him dangerous. Um, and so I think he'll make it to merge. I don't know if he'll make it past it though. Well, one thing that hasn't been said is, uh, he is friends with a uh, former player in Garrett. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the games that Garrett would run was the games that uh, Ben has played and has done well and also has not done well in. Uh, <laughs> so obviously it's going to be a different uh, experience doing it uh, through Zoom and all that. He has a very good captivating person personality. He's very charismatic. Uh, I feel like he, like Alex said, He's definitely a gamer. He came across as a gamer to me. So if he can bring that down, that would be for his, um, like, he has a better chance of going far. It, the more he shows himself being a gamer, I think will be more of a detriment to his chances to get further into the game because we will have people with online or experience that I feel can be a little more cutthroat. And if they sense him as a danger early, I don't think they will hesitate to take a swing. So that's my only pause with him. Outside of that, if he can get past that, he has all the tools in the basket of a good survivor player that can make it deep into a game. Yeah, I feel like Ben is that, you know, we've talked about threat, charismatic guy, that he's just, he, he might get confident and might get sure of a plan. And that's when he gets blindsided, like has no idea that it's coming. Great TV, but like, <laughs> I, I feel like if he, if he doesn't keep his, his confidence in like allies and people, because we do have people on this cast that, you know, are good liars that, you know, will tell you, yeah, I'm with you and then hop to a breakout room and say, all right, so the plan is Ben. So he just has to worry about, I guess, ally management. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think the other thing going with that, you're right. He is very confident. I could almost see him pulling somewhat of a James in a knowingly force rocks and could be the detriment of it. Uh, we always have rocks happen in every single mini. Uh, <laughs> so someone's bound to do it. And why wouldn't it be someone who's uber confident that he'll be safe regardless of if it went to rocks or not? Mm -hmm. What a way to go too. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But with that, Alex, Lily, God, no. Plant your flag. Is he pre-merge? Merge boot, or is he going deep into this game? I'm not throwing out either pre-merge or deep into the game because I think things can go certain ways, but he seems very much merge boot to me, and that's what I'm going to go with. All right. 100%, I agree. I think he's merge or he's right after merge where he like just misses the merge. Um, I don't think he's really either end for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Alex, thank you so much for joining us uh, and covering our latest castaway. But now we're going to move on to our next guest and cover some more. So our next guest to talk about our next castaway. We know him. We love him. He was one of our favorites from Exile Island. And he's on prod. Greg, come on in here. Yeah. What's up? What's up? <laughs> hey. Greg, how you doing? Doing great. Doing really good. Yeah. Just uh, finishing up the work day and getting ready for a trip up to New York for some pickleball. Obviously, what else am I doing? <laughs> well, we're here to have you cover 
our next castaway that you actually had a hand in helping us get in touch with. Mm-hmm. And that is Sarah Wolf Cunningham. She's 34 years old. Uh, she is from Seattle. Another Pacific Seattle Northwest person. is just like really yeah. good. One. Listen, yeah. we've had a lot of Pacific Northwest Seattle first boots so we <laughs> want to get them up in the ranks of celestina here so i was gonna say we, got, and, we were just like let's jam pack this season and it, if one of them falls victim we still have more uh, yeah. honestly i'm just more surprised that we had so many people on the west coast be like yeah i'll start a game at like 7 <laughs> 30 i would not do that but you know it's funny because not even like thinking about the seattle thing when i was reviewing sarah's application uh sorry sarah's application and her uh, her interview video, the first thing that kind of came to my mind was like, I feel like she's either going to go out early or going to go really deep in the game. And then I saw she was from Seattle. I was like, okay, this makes sense why I think that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. I actually, I've, I've got some high hopes for Sarah. I'm looking forward to kind of digging into more about her. All right. Well, let's get into it, Greg. Yeah, let's what dig in. Thoughts? How's your <laughs> thoughts? So um, she as she's a photographer and she also does have a corporate job working with attorneys. Uh, so she's got a lot of experience making people comfortable because uh, I think that's what's needed for a good photographer. You have to have a subject that's in a mood ready enough to be photographed because it sounds like she does more, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know. What's the what's the word like people photography, portrait photography? Mm-hmm. Um and she, like bringing out the best in people and like working with their energy and their personality, which I think is a really good trait in Survivor is having the ability to kind of camouflage yourself and be a bit of a chameleon to like kind of be what others need. Um, so I think that that could really, really help her, which I'm, I'm hoping she can pull off really well. Um, also, just from watching her interview, she's a really calming presence. Like she speaks really softly so it's not, I don't think she's going to stand out too early as being a threat, which I think is good for her. Um, but she also did mention in her application that she's worried about getting a little paranoid at times. And we all know what could happen when when someone gets paranoid. You know, you could really just kind of start to spin out in a game like this, and especially at this pace. But I think, you know, she's, she's 34, so she's, you know, m- more mature than some of the younger players. I think she'll be able to kind of, bounce back if she does stumble at the beginning so Mm -hmm. i that's why i kind of think she could go pretty deep into the game and i'm I'm really looking forward to watching her play yeah i completely agree greg and one thing she talked about a lot in her interview was the emotional intelligence that's required in her job which Mm -hmm. when i think of a photographer that is like not that that's not what they do but i just that's not the first thing i think of and so i think in this game, there's going to be a lot of social players, a lot of strategic players, but I think Sarah's going to be one of the ones that will be able to maneuver without mm-hmm. people realizing that she's maneuvering the game and maneuvering within alliances or whatever she needs to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think she would probably do better one-on-one. Like you said, she's a little bit soft-spoken. She has a very calming presence. And the only thing I worry about is that getting lost in the scrambles or in the large groups um, that can happen in these short-term games. That's true. And I, I think maybe to her benefit and something that she doesn't know and no one knows is that we're doing three tribes and it's three tribes of five. So she mm-hmm. is going to have that smaller group to maybe be able to get into that one-on-one conversation with a couple of people early on, and that could help her out. Um, but, and, but, and also, but to that point though, Lily, which I think is a good point about her maybe not being able to stand out so much in a big group, if she does make the merge, that's a, that's a great thing. Like you don't yeah. want to stand out at the merge. Yeah. <laughs> people are going to start looking at you funny, but like people might kind of not necessarily like forget about her, but they might think like, Oh, like we can, we can deal with her later. But I, you know, I think she could have the social bonds with certain people to like where later is going to be too late for people <laughs> to take her out. Yeah. So, I agree. so with, with Sarah, I'm just, because she's new, she's never played a game before. I'm very fascinated when it comes to new players. Like I, I'm, I'm very excited. Even though she has ideas of what she wants to do, you know, it's like you know, it's that Mike Tyson uh, phrase of like you, you have a plan until you get punched in the face. You know, then like you have to actually figure out what your plan is, mm-hmm. and and the punch in the face would be like if you lose the first tribal or yeah. the first uh, challenge and have to go to tribal. 
Um, I'm very interested to see, is she someone who will be able to adapt to that pace of play and understand quickly? Because there are people on this cast who have experience in various formats and they're going to know what they need to do. And if they feel like they see her falling behind instantly, they, even if they like her, they may be more cutthroat and willing to like, she's, she's going to weigh me down because she, I don't see her picking up the pace. Mm-hmm. Um, but if she does pick up the pace, I can see her being one of those uh, temper mo- or like very even keeled people up until like maybe she loses an ally or two. Mm-hmm. And then that's where the paranoia would uh, pick up. Um, I don't know if she wins the game, but I'm very interested to see how fast she adapts. And if she does adapt fast, I could see her making like a at least to like mid merge. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So one of her pet peeves uh, is people who can't think outside themselves and their experiences. So since she hasn't played a game, I think that might be beneficial uh, hearing her pet peeve because then she can take the game as it comes to her versus other people who have played other orgs where it's like, oh, this isn't like my last mo- one. In my last one, I did this. Yeah. And so she's coming to this as like a person who really wants to play the actual CBS game of survivor. And I think she's going to come at it with that fresh energy. Yeah, I think that's right. And she, I mean, she is a a survivor super fan. We found her because she posted a reel on Instagram. I think it was a year ago. I just found some old reel where she was like creeped. No, like (laughs) she came out to her friends as being a huge like survivor super fan, like all of us. She was like, I really want to go on the show. So I was like, instead of the show, what if you applied for an online, like a virtual version of it? And so she's really intrigued by it. So she's got the fandom, but I think I think her lack of experience in the org world, I think will come into effect with her probably having a hard time getting any of the advantages or, or idols that pop up. I think those, you know, if, if you're not, if you don't know where to look, they're really, sometimes they're really impossible to get. Um, so I think she might have a hard time getting that, but um, I think socially, I, I, I think she could do pretty decently in the game. Yeah. Well, let's put your money where your mouth is, Greg, Uh-oh. Greg, Lily end result. What is Sarah's fate? Pre-merge, merge boot, deep run. So I think her tribe loses the first challenge. She is Mm -hmm. pre-merge. If she's able to get like through that vote, then I think she lands around like the fourth spot. Okay. Like fourth place, Lily? Yeah, fourth place, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I kind of think... I kind of think that too. I think, I think she could make a pretty deep run. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of thought about about her a little bit, and she might play similar to how Victoria Chiswick did in Sahara Dunes, where she was mm-hmm. very just even keeled. She people once you got to know her, got to like they liked her and wanted to work with her, but at that at a certain point they were just like well she's got to go now <laughs> so i feel like i feel like sarah might fall into into that placement of like sixth well we will have to wait and find out what her true fate will be but yes. thank you greg for coming in to cover sarah and now we're going to move on to our next guest and cast away okay our next guest is I mean, the best person in all of Monte Carlo, obviously, it is McKenna English. She is here to talk about a couple of castaways. Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> Long time no see. I know, right? <laughs> oh, right. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to love to hear your take as a someone who played the long game and only had a about 30 minutes 40 an hour of like a a mini so uh we're gonna start here with andrew he's 36 he's a personal trainer from limerick pa so i actually know andrew and played a mini with andrew uh just a couple weeks ago now um unfortunately did have to boot him (laughs) pre-merge um only because i was was playing tribe strong um 
similarly enough though this that many started three tribes um so I'm excited to see how that experience you know transfers over to this game starting three tribes having a trinity theme um I never wanted to vote him out voted him out in in different circumstances he, I would have worked closely with him um I really like him too <laughs> just, just putting that out there um this but, is McKenna's official apology. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, It'll I, get to him a little late, but <laughs> I was ride or dying for somebody else at that point. So. <laughs> oh man. I really think that Andrew is going to do well though. I think um, he did well in the challenges. He absolutely killed some push-ups. That's really like the, the big stick out for me <laughs> um, and glad he did. So I didn't have to. Um, but I think he's going to be like really good in challenges. So he'll be good, you know, in that tribe phase, um, double-edged sword kind of, you know, where come merge, he might be seen as a threat, uh, cause he can win challenges, <laughs> um, <laughs> and not only being like a challenge beast, but he's also just a nice guy. And in his interview was kind of saying like, I'm a family guy and I, I coach my son's, my kids games. And I'm like kind of a well-rounded, I mean, he said he wanted to replace grass with, with diamond. That's like all American hero. type. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he has just a lot of, a lot of positives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I completely agree. McKenna, when I hear like personal trainer, immediately alarm bells go off, even though this is virtual survivor, right? Like, why am I freaking out that there's a personal trainer on my tribe? Because I'm intimidated by those people. <laughs> but the best part about Andrew is he is not intimidating. Like he's very unassuming. You know what I mean? Just like McKenna said, like he's very like go with the flow. He seems like he really relies on his intuition, which I think is going to really bring him far in this game. The only thing I can't tell is in his application, he says he doesn't mind chaos. You know, if he has to be an agent of chaos, he's for it. And I don't see how that plays into his game with the twist of, you know, he is like a whole, I, I think of Andrew as like a wholesome man, right? Like you, you want your kids to have their play dates with Andrew's kids. You know what I mean? So I don't know how chaos goes into his game. And I think that'll be the most interesting for me. Okay. So I, I'm going to have to keep my notes like down with Andrew. Cause uh, he, he is a friend of mine. I played a big brother uh, org with him uh, instinct. Shout out to instinct. Uh, me and him, we were both very tight allies and also extreme adversaries of each other in the deep game. Uh, we would be on calls for like hours at a time, giving each other the BS of like, oh, we'll take each other to the end. Don't worry. Even though we both knew and we would talk about the logic about why it wouldn't be smart to take us, but why we would still do it. Uh, mm-hmm. He ultimately cuts me at the end and gets that win, a very well-deserved win. He controlled basically the entire game. Uh, and a lot of people were blind to it until it was too late. Like because he comes off very relaxed. Like you would think that all the stereotypes that you would have of a personal trainer, uh, Andrew's not. Like uh, he is. He can. He's more soft spoken, but like he'll still have the conversation with you. Uh, he will really go through all the bullet points of what options there are. And he will be self-interested at the end of the day, which I think will be important for him in this type of format. Um, that being said, his experience from what I recognize is he either gets like to the end of the game or he goes out pretty much uh, because of those sort of things being a threat. Like they might get taken advantage that he is this like wholesome guy who can work around the chaos. I don't think he's a chaotic player, but if he sees chaos coming, he's able to navigate it mm-hmm. so I, I feel like there's a lot of avenues where he could get screwed at the beginning of this game but if he can get past those hoops I could see him like easily getting a tight alliance around him and marching forward w- without hesitation yeah so my only worry for him is like he needs to sell his final tribal if he gets there because we've seen in many a mini that anybody whose game is like more under the radar and not out there and maybe they don't say the right thing or like people don't have enough time 
to see Mm -hmm. the moves that people are making they kind of go by the wayside and someone who has like the flashiness maybe not has played a better game but you know has a couple of moves that were visible to the jury um get that win so he really has to hone in if he makes it to final tribal council and he does play this under the radar game that these are all of my moves here's why i did them and here's how i did them i'm not afraid of that i've seen him do a final uh or a final speech it wasn't final travel because it was big brother themed uh obviously had more time to prepare because it was a long format game Mm -hmm. but he's not someone who is afraid to own their game he will own every single move that he made and give you the reasons why in his opinion, it was the most optimal move for him to make. Uh, whether that the jury respects that, that's on them. He, I'm not afraid of him being able to get to the end, explain his game thoroughly, and like just show the logic behind his moves. Mm-hmm. It just has to get there. Yeah. <laughs> but with that being said, uh, McKenna Inglis and <laughs> Lily, uh, will Andrew be pre-merge, merge boot, or deep run? I mean, for his sake, I I want to see him go all the way. I do not want to see him go. Yeah, you're not in the in, you're not in the game, so like I'm not in the game to cut him early. <laughs> um, <laughs> if we had a redo, I'd change it all up. But um, I I my gut's telling me like shortly after the merge. I think you know, depending on how much he tells about his past and how, he has a ton of experience. Um, it, if he shows those cards a little too much, as long as well as like all these really elevated facets of his game. I think he's going to, he's going to, they're going to use them to win and then they're going to cut him. Yeah, I could see. I don't think he goes pre-merge. Like we're going to said, I don't do push-ups. So if he wants to do the push-ups, I'm going to keep him around. You know what I mean? And I think people will see that there are aspects of a game where you need someone that has the endurance. And I think that's, what's going to keep him around. And I think, again, he's a good guy. Um, I actually kind of see him going pretty far into the game. I don't know that he gets to the end, but I could see him falling between like the five, six, five, seven, getting voted out in that range. Okay. All right. We're going to move on to our next castaway here. This is Lo Murray. Uh, she's 30. She's an educator from San Francisco and we have two experienced bad bitch players here and we're adding our first mini bad bitch book club <laughs> player uh to the list so that's why we obviously had to have mckenna talk about her i love bad bitches it's <laughs> <laughs> someone said that about me and so i'll own that um but i i don't know low um bad bitch book club's like nineteen thousand people um it's impossible to know it was hard enough for me to get to know 16 other people. Imagine 19,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I liked everything I saw from her. Um, I think she is personable. I think she's kind. Um, I'm obviously rooting for her because she's in, you know, this like sub internet cult that I'm a part of as well. <laughs> um, but I'm nervous for her because I can't remember exactly what she said, but um, she has like a servant leadership style where she, you know, kind of does things for other people and that's how she serves them. And I'm nervous that people are going to take advantage of that in her and um, kind of have her make the moves and and say the names and kind of get the blow on her hands and then um, she'll pay the price for that. But I'm excited. I'm really, really excited to see how she navigates the game. Um just as someone who seems very social and someone who has a, a varied in, a lot of varied interests, um, I think she'll be able to connect to a lot of different people in the game. Yeah, my favorite thing about Lo was like, she is so expressive and engaging in a conversation. Like her face matches what you're telling her, which I think is important in these Zoom games is that people are, you know, taking a look at who's paying attention when you're in the scramble rooms as the winners and you're just trying to pass the time. And I think that's going to help her. Um, I know we've mentioned she's part of the bad bitch book club. And a lot of what we've talked about through, you know, us coming in is these girls willingly joined a 
virtual club to get to know people, to connect on similar interests. And that is exactly what she can bring into this game to get her to go far. And we've seen that, right? The lowest, lowest, I guess, position <laughs> that a bad bitch member has gotten, yeah, is like eighth, right? And that's a great placement. So I think that she's going to make that. I don't see her going before eighth in this game. I love the faith that you guys have in your alumni, <laughs> your own little alumni <laughs> network that you have. Um, I mean, I, I, I love Lo. Honestly, like I, I thought she her, she interviewed amazingly. Uh, I felt she's very personable. Can, I can understand where she's coming from when she's talking to me. Um, all that's good. She has a background with jigsaw puzzles. So puzzles is always a good thing to have in your background. Uh, she also, I think, could do well in some endurance style challenges because of her hiking background. So gotta imagine those legs are strong, uh, <laughs> at least lean strong, which is honestly the way to go. Uh, always go lean. Uh, but I, I always just get, I get nervous because I think what helped people from your community is the fact that you guys did the long game where you had days to get to use like that style of getting to know people. You are already aware of how to do that in that type of format. I'm concerned to see how it approaches in a mini. Mm -hmm. And if she doesn't go fast enough to make those connections when she needs to, that's my only concern of why she could potentially go out early. But again, I love this whole cast and I could give reasons why I would love to see this bad bitch book club trend continue of at <laughs> least making early merge. Uh, that That's my thoughts on it. Yeah. I mean, it's, she's either going to go third juror or very deep in the game because the, that, those are the, the bad bitch <laughs> stereotypes, but she does say um, in her like one sentence about you that she's always the solo invite to parties, which uh, could be very advantageous when you have two warring sides and she's the, that solo invite and people want to get her to their side. So I feel like she could be that swing in any situation. I wrote that down too about from her application because I'm like, you have to have, you have to be quick on your feet. You have to be good with people. If you're going somewhere alone, especially like a wedding or a party, you know, you're not going to go and stand in a corner. You're going to go and socialize. And I think that'll be really helpful for her. Um, even in this, in the, the quick format. Yeah, for sure. But with that, <laughs> we got to no. know it is low. I, I think you guys are already gave the answer, but officially uh, is she mm-hmm. pre-merge? Is she merge boot? Is she a deep run? I have her going far. I I like a fifth place boot. Like oh, do a, fifth, you? a fifth place. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best. Fifth place club. <laughs> um, spoilers. But uh, no, I see her going really far. I can see her, you know, flying under the radar a little bit, still building those connections. It's obviously way harder in a mini than it is in a long game. But I see her going far. Maybe not to the end, but but far. I actually had fifth place right in mind uh, <laughs> right before McKenna was speaking. Um, I think I think she's smart. And I think you get that when you talk to her. And I think she's able to connect with a lot of people. And I think that that will be hard for her to hide in this game. And that will catch up to her. But I think she makes it well past the merge. Is that is that you have fifth place because you still want to keep the ranking as highest? Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so yeah. I have no. her winning the game now. <laughs> yeah, the, no bad bitch players can win the game, but they can go far. <laughs> I would love Lo to win. I'm putting that out there now. Please <laughs> take the crown. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, McKenna, thank you for coming on and talking uh, to us about these two wonderful <laughs> castaways. And yeah, watch Monte Carlo and watch McKenna be a badass. <laughs> yeah, watch Monte Carlo. Same with plug. thanks for having me of course and now we will move on to our next guest okay to cover our next two castaways we have a special guest here a two-time player he may only want us to remember the first time uh you know him from lala manu beach and from monte carlo it's kyle direct 
Kyle, come yeah. on in. <laughs> Kyle, how you doing, man? I'm doing just fine. I'm going old school today, representing Tapua, the OG. Yes. Uh, let's yep. go. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's get down to it. Our first castaway that you'll be assessing is uh, Jonathan Scott Lamone. I probably said it wrong. Sounds better that way. So <laughs> just saying. Uh, he is 32 years old. He is from Long Island, New York, and he's in the U.S. Coast Guard. Kyle, what do you think of Jonathan? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for your service, Jonathan. Uh, much respect to you. Um, having said that, I am a little worried for Jonathan in the game, uh, mostly because he says that he's a slow learner, um, which could be a problem in a mini, because if you can't adapt quickly, um, that's going to be a lot of trouble. So I'm very interested to see how he's going to navigate the early part of the game because he has a great personality, I think. Um, it's just, are people going to see that quickly enough in order to form that connection? So the early part is what I'm worried about for him. But I think that if he could get like two or three strong allies, then I could see him going all the way. I completely agree. I mean, right off the bat, I open up his interview and I'm like instantly intimidating, intimidated by him. He just like seems like a like buff guy. He's got all his race medals in the background. And I'm like, oh, this guy is the real deal. Um, and so I think he's going to have to work to take that kind of threat level of his perception down exactly like Kyle said. I think he has a great personality. He said one of his goals is to listen just as people are talking, kind of get a grasp of how people are playing before he puts his foot in. And I think the hardest thing for him is when is he going to do that? If he waits too long, I think he goes early. If he does it too fast, his threat level rises too early. Um, yeah, I mean, I would love to play with him. He seems like he's just here to have fun. I think he'll be a great cast member. I'm just worried that if he takes too long to gauge the cast, the cast will easily vote him out. Yeah, so I I, I love Jonathan. Like, I think he's a splendid dude. Um, I agree. Metals in background, may, maybe move those uh, if you're going to use that <laughs> as your location for your challenges. Um, might make good friends with Andrew if they end up on the same yeah, tribe. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. He is another soft spoken, which I love that this cast is very mixed between loud personalities like intense gamers and then like you also have like the more reserved when like more i would call them the ex the introverted extroverts right like there's no one that i think is like completely like will be within their shell i think he will have some warming up to do i think he'll figure out the pace i could see him being someone who instead of being taken out because he's a slow learner is someone that some of the gamers will pull in thinking that like oh he can just be a number for me and then like bring him to the merge like oh and then it's whatever happens there it happens but then i think because he'll have time then to get his, his feet under him start learning start seeing things it might be allowed like that caterpillar turning into the butterfly type of game that i would love to see in a mini because that would be just incredible to see someone actually be able to do that within like a 10 hour window. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so those are my like hopes and dreams for Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, I think he is definitely a slow burn kind of guy where he needs to to get his feet wet. Like he's done. He does the first challenge and all right, let's go. Um, I He also comes with some experience indirectly. His husband used to run like discord based orgs yep. so he he's like he knows of stuff but he's never played and he's never like played this format because i mean dcp is a format in itself so <laughs> um i i'm just i'm really excited i think he has so much potential in this game um my one thing is in his pet peeves it says People asking questions or favors uh, that they're completely capable of answering themselves. And that's like all you do in a lot of scramble rounds. It's like, all right, who's the vote? Even though you know who you want the vote to be, you still have to like ask and try and get someone else to say that name you want. So I don't know if he'll get frustrated on the uh, constant, um, all right, who's the vote? Who's the vote? Who's the vote? 
All right. And one other thing I want to add is I feel like he, because of like his background mm-hmm. and also just like his competitive nature, I feel like he's someone who will be coming in with one of the more decent sized chips on their shoulder of wanting to prove that they can do well in this, like, like prove it to himself, prove it to his husband, like, like everything. Like, I think he has ambition for the game. And sometimes that can be just, just as dangerous as having like skill right off the bat. Like I would take someone who's hungry, who's new over someone who's could be a little lackadaisical because I've done this before. But with that being said, will Jonathan be pre-merge, merge, or go deep? Do you want to go I deep? see <laughs> him falling. Okay, he gives me like he's from Long Island, so he gives me like Zucker vibes. And I think he goes out in Zucker's vote from exile. I think he goes oh. out. Like, don't don't hurt me like that. <laughs> I know. I think he go like everybody loves him. There's really no point in getting him out except for he is just like a pawn in other people's like he is collateral. And I think that's how he goes out. And I think he goes out quickly after the march. I'll say I'll I'll have so I'll I'll have faith in Jonathan. I'll say that he's going all the way. <laughs> Even though I do think that I think that if his tribe loses the first challenge, though, I think that he's very uh, he could easily be the first boot just because he is soft spoken. So if people say like, Hey, I haven't talked to Jonathan yet. Oh, you haven't either. Let's just vote him out. Um, mm-hmm. But I think if he can make the merge. Yeah. I think that he could easily make a deep run. Well, we will have to wait and see, but we're going to move on to our next castaway, And we're going to be talking about Luke Goebel. He is 40 years old from Indianapolis and he's a seventh grade science teacher slash inspirer. <laughs> Kyle, what do you think about Luke? Well, the first thing that I think of when I think of Luke is just fun. You know, he just seems like a fun guy. The three things that stood out to me from his application um, was the inspiring thing. Uh, he's a beer drinker. Nice. Uh, and Tammy from our cases. He was one yes. of the he was one of the few people who actually gave like, you know, a legit answer to the question for who's a random survivor. So <laughs> I loved that. Um He's a self-admitted high variance player. He has a lot of experience, but he's also finished in a lot of different places. So this, how he's going to do here is really going to be just up in the air. Um, I do think that his personality is going to be strong enough to keep him safe early. He kind of reminds me, I hope he takes this as a compliment, um, of Rupert on his first season where it was just like he's this larger than life personality um, and people will gravitate towards that early. But I think that once the merge hits, his uh, threat level is going to spike. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's funny that you mentioned that he's a variant player, but I think like within his interview, you can tell with every time he's gotten voted out pre-emerge, I think he's taken something from it. And in his interview, it was probably like one of the longer interviews that we had, very talkative, you know, outgoing personality, but he's not one to just talk to doc, talk, excuse me, unlike me. Talk to um, doc. <laughs> yeah, he is engaging with people. And I think that's a big variant in the beginning of his game. I think what will be vital for him is to not take the leadership role. I think as someone that's played these games before, it's hard not to take that spot. But I think if he's able to let somebody else take on the leadership role, but then when he gets to the breakout rooms, be the vocal one, ask people, engage with them on what they want their game to look like, I could see him going really far in this game. So a lot, there's a lot of things with Luke. Like you guys hit a lot on the head, very personable easy to have a conversation with can talk about whatever really uh, he also is a uh, rhap patron so like he listens to a lot of rob sesternino and rob sesternino put out like the evolution of strategy so i'm sure he has listened to that like he has the knowledge behind him i almost compare him in taking the benefits of this he is Lalumanu Beach's Greg Davidson. If he had pure survivor knowledge and knew how to throw his personality around in all the correct ways, mm-hmm. but like I was the, it's make just that, that comparison, I was like I could, that. like I could see him being in the confessional, going gripping and ripping, and like <laughs> put, giving like McKenna tons of options for episode titles. Um, 
But like ultimately, I think he's also the biggest wild card in this game due to his high variance. Like, and because like ultimately he's here to have a fun time. He would love to win, but ultimately he's here to have fun. And sometimes that can take you out extremely early if you're not because if you're just having fun, you're not being as careful or like keeping your eye on the prize. You're not seeing the things from the periphery. Um, but I, I love this man. Like he he is so funny. It was so fun getting to listen to him. And I can't wait to try to make him answer questions at a tribal. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Luke made me fall in love with him for one answer and one answer alone. And it is Tammy from Marquesas as his random survivor player. This was the goal of this question to get someone to say Tammy and w- I got it and I I couldn't have been happier with the person behind the answer. He is this uh just you you feel his energy through the screen and one interesting thing that he said he was like I will play up I'm the old guy if I need to but like I know my way around technology. I can maneuver through these breakout rooms. I can do what needs to be done. So I feel like it'll be fun if he does that, but I don't want him to do it with, you know, other castaways seeing him as the old guy and then vote him out for it. Right. Yeah. Uh, With that, will Luke go be pre-merge, merge, or deep run. What version of Rupert is he, Kyle? <laughs> well, I think going with the Rupert 1.0 connection, I think he's going to be merged. Um, you know, like I said, once he hits the merge, then I think people are going to be looking at him. Like you said, with Greg, he was always a target because he was so vocal. Nobody's ever going to uh, forget that he's there. So I'm thinking like seventh to 10th, I think is like the most likely place that he's going to finish. Um, that's my guess Kyle took the words right out of my mouth I was going to (laughs) say six seven eight I think those are his placements in our game well we will have to see if Luke is a Greg Davidson or is he better than Greg Davidson and Rupert I'm always (laughs) already going to say no matter what his placement is he's better than Rupert uh sorry not sorry but Kyle (laughs) thank you so much for coming in to assess these two castaways And we're now going to move forward and talk about some more. And we are bringing in our next castaway, one of uh, my favorite people that I've hosted. And now I co-host a podcast with her over on the Specialist Patreon page. It is the one and only Kylie Scruggs. Hi! (laughs) Just want to be known. You are also one of my favorite people (laughs) that has ever hosted me. One of my favorite. Oh, great. So you only have two. (laughs) hey guys what is up not much we are ready to get into these couple castaways that you will be breaking down with us one of them is emily paddock she is 22 she's an analyst from michigan yes okay i am first of all really excited to talk about both of these people but emily i'm really pumped about i think that she has very high winner potential just right off the bat in my opinion and i'm not gonna lie i'm very bad at winner picks so just gonna get that out of the way i don't want to jinx <laughs> but i think that she has all the makings of a really good player um so i'm like really pumped to watch her play i think my favorite thing about her is just her general personality um she is very like quirky and warm and she seems very inviting to me so I personally would love to play with her I'm really excited to watch her um I think that she can do really well but I also think that all of the aspects of her that could prove to help her in the game could also prove to hurt her because it could make her a threat so I'm interested to see how she does um but I'm really excited to watch her Yeah, I completely agree. And she even said in her interview, she is like an agent of chaos. That is like how she plays, which is always great for TV, but it's hard for a chaotic player to get to the end. And even as she talks, not like she's not chaotic. I think the way the word you used is like quirky is perfect. And her personality, you can see her personality as soon as she starts talking. And I think 
the one thing that will help her is I think this cast will like that. I think maybe with other casts, it might be kind of daunting or maybe intimidating, but I could see Emily kind of pairing up with one of the quieter members on our cast and like steamrolling the rest of the game. So it'll be really interesting to see how she plays in this mini. Yeah, so from the games that she has shown in her application, uh, she seems outside of one game where she goes out early, she has a very high placement across the board with everything else. So that just shows like the caliber of player being able to play on different casts and different types of survivor games. So that's good for her. Um, I also am more so like, I don't see like downside with Emily. I think she's someone who I would put in as a lock to get past the merge from there. Obviously it's more of a gamble of what's going on at that point, but we at least in DCP, we have not seen, I feel, a true, like, female agent of chaos. Like, I feel like the closest we got to that was maybe Mackenzie during Exile. Mm-hmm. Um, and that blew up in her face immediately. So we didn't get to see full, <laughs> full rage of chaos for a long extended period of time. I'm, I would be very intrigued to see how Emily goes about dealing that chaos as well as handling... Some other people on this cast who I think will also be bringing different types of chaos as mm-hmm. well. And will that conflict or will that be like a great marriage of convenience? And they're going to be like, let's overwhelm everybody else with this, with this energy and see if they all just drown in it. <laughs> yeah. So I have personal experience with playing with Emily and she's also on production for another live game that I was in. Um, and she is, it's like watching an artist do like sculpt their work. Like she is so good at the game of survivor. The only reason why she went out really early in that one game is because it was her, it, she had won one game, won another game and played this one. And they were like, no. (laughs) <laughs> like they they just shot her shot her down uh from continuing uh playing but she she's chaotic in the sense of when she's backed into a a corner or like when she knows she's going home she will flip turn whatever upside down that she needs to to be able to save herself she's just really good at survivor there's like no ifs ands or buts about it something that i found interesting about her was that in her application she mentioned that yes she's played in a lot of games but she does a lot better in the live games so in lrgs more so than orgs and so i am interested to see like mckenna you probably know this better but like how much experience does she have in minis has she played in any before so like i don't know if she's played necessarily uh many I don't know her org experience but the one that I the live game that I played with her was a mini version of a live game so it was a one day live game and she is just able to maneuver how she needs to but she is a really honest player like she's not gonna throw out lies she's gonna truth her way to be like you see this is the plan this is this clearly makes obvious sense and you're like oh yes let me vote with you for that so like she's not chaotic in the sense of I'm gonna lie and blow shit up she's chaotic in a in, in just like twisting your mind <laughs> I love that nothing- I think that's why I think that she has high winner potential because she has all of the aspects of a good player just in general like I know when I came in I had no experience and when y'all were doing my cast assessment it's like all you could speak about was my personality the way I answer these questions like what strategy I wanted to bring it's like she has all of that but then she also has the experience to back it up and so she may come in and it may be a unique experience for her doing a mini online but she still has all of this other like game experience that she's done in the past so I think like she won't be as startled when it comes to like the crazy twist in the beginning um or just the fast pace of the game and so I just really think like all of that can culminate in like a really really good player and I like literally can't wait to watch it (laughs) I agree but I think also 
like she's a good chaotic player from what I hear. And there's nothing better than watching a good like person twist the game into what they need. It's just making sure that that people don't pick up on it. And I think it sounds like she's been good in the past, but it'll be interesting to see with the vets that we have or the newbies, if they're able to pick up on her way to maneuver and twist this game. Yeah. And ultimately it's going to be a, do they see it and they're like, Oh, that's someone good to have in my corner or, Oh, this is a problem. Let's cut it from the root right now. But with that being said, is she pre-merge? Is he is she merge? Or is she deep run? What is it? Well, I mean, I've said it like what three times so far. I, <laughs> I, I think she wins. <laughs> or I would love to see very <laughs> I obviously have no idea. Like in a mini, there's literally so much that can happen. So I'm gonna say she definitely goes post-merge. Um if I were to pick a placement, I would say she makes it to final tribal, but I mean, and if she makes it there, I think she's going to win. So she's my winner pick right now, but also like, I don't see her going pre-merge regardless. So I just say post-merge overall. I agree. I don't think she goes merge. I don't think she goes close to merge. I think she lands around like four or five. A fourth boot, actually, that is a good, that's a good point, Lily. I could see her doing that. It's like going far, but like, being too much of a threat the, the, the robbed mm-hmm. goddess position Rob goddess, yes I, I could see her being a robbed goddess yeah it's a good call all right so now we oh, are wait. going to- i have one more thing hold on okay Before all right you- i just want to say she's a taylor swift fan and i love that about her <laughs> okay <laughs> moving on uh, i'm gonna do it moving taylor swiftly on uh we are going <laughs> to go we are going to go to our next castaway selkirk he is 25, an engineer from Victoria. Oh, my Not God. Not a Canadian on the cast. Let's go. <laughs> Not only is, it, is he a Canadian, he, uh, he joins the ranks of some amazing DCP royalty in the friends of the one and only production, John. Um, so I'm very pumped to talk about Selkirk. I cannot wait to watch him play. <laughs> Where do I begin? So... In short, Selkirk is going to be a unique character, I can tell. Um, He is friends with Sean Hunter. So if you have, you watching, if you have watched the Hera Dunes, my season, then you know Sean and you know how he knew nothing about Survivor, but he was a phenomenal character, someone so fun to watch. And I think that Selkirk will be very similar while they're different personalities. um, So I'll jump on the personality bandwagon when it comes to like how I talked about Emily already. Um, Selkirk is gonna be unique, I think. He's a little bit more soft-spoken, a little bit more thoughtful in his words. I actually, watching his interview, I kind of see a similarity with him to Danny from my season. I don't know if y'all agree, but basically like from what I gather, he's a very thoughtful person when it comes to how he speaks. And so when I was playing, I really found trust pretty quickly with Danny because you could tell when he was talking, like he put thought into what he was going to say. He didn't want to like say something that he was going to regret and he didn't want to just be reactive. And I think that Selkirk is going to be pretty similar in that way. And so I think that could go one of two ways. Like it could be a situation kind of like Danny where everyone trusted him pretty quickly and wanted to work with him. Or it could be like, oh my gosh, this guy thinks kind of slow and the fast pace of this game is going to like miss him. Um, Or maybe people are going to pick up on the fact that he doesn't know a lot about the game. Um, So with that being said, I I don't know how he's going to do, but I'm really excited to see because I think that he does have a strategic mind, albeit he doesn't know a lot about Survivor, um, but he plays a lot of these strategy games. So I think he could do really well and could be a really fun character, um, but he could also just kind of missed the boat in the sense of not knowing a lot about the game so I'm interested to see I am not as like confident as and him as I was with Emily but regardless I'm like really excited to watch him play I really liked his answer in the interview that his goal is to focus on the team dynamic and where he fits in I think that's going to be crucial to his game the hardest thing for me with him is like I can't get a read on him He's funny, he's smart, but like, what is he really thinking? I'm not sure. And I don't know that that's going to come across in the game. Um, I think like Kylie said, people will either take it as, you know, he's thinking what he's saying. He's trying to be straightforward with me or 
he's spinning 20 million things in his head right now and is trying to pick out the right one to say to me. And then in the scramble, the next scramble room, the other like things spinning in his head. So I think that it just depends on if he's able to find himself indisposable in the dynamic that he mentioned in his interview. Um, it's funny because I actually wrote at the beginning of his interview, he comes off really smart and I swear it's not the headset. I swear. I was going to mention if you didn't. I, gotta talk I know. About that. <laughs> I was like, it's, it's the way that he like, I feel like you can tell he's very analytical and he is very like, I don't know. It's something about like his aura that gives me off of like, he is like a straightforward, smart dude. And there is somebody out there that wants to align with him. I just hope he finds it before the merge. Yeah, I feel like he is this weird, like, combination of Sean, Hunter, and John. <laughs> like, I like based off his answers, based off his feedback, and it's not just because they're friends with each other. It's just it's easy to make this comparison with all of them. It's like. I feel he's like Sean in the sense of, I feel like he's going to be someone who will be a like, oh, you're from my original tribe. We should just be sticking together then. Like, especially if there's swaps involved, if they get some type of numbers heading into the merge, if he gets there, like, I feel like he is going to be that type of straightforward person. Like he'll be strategic, but I think he'll be strategic for the people he starts out with. And if people see that, then he's extremely useful in the early portion of the game as a long-term asset. If people don't see that, then there's a concern that he could go out if his tribe doesn't win. So his best bet, I hate having to use challenges as a crutch, but I think he's someone who may need to have like, at least be safe the first round. So then he gets to have that opportunity to be stuck in a room with with the rest of that tribe and figure it out for himself mm-hmm. of the dynamics because he is one of the few people in the application as well who said that he would prefer three tribes because yeah. strategically it would be more interesting for him to start in a smaller setting. So he's also a wild card variant in this game for me. He could be a very early boot or he could or he could just keep falling it forward, keep falling forward, keep falling forward because he's going to be the strategic and I would believe loyal player. Yeah, I really hope he doesn't live up to his sum up who you are in a sentence because that was trying to vibe and failing horrendously. (laughs) I hope he doesn't just like keep trying in this game and then just just fail I hope he either like Alex says fail upward or like succeed and like grasp the game but if he does wear that gamer headset you never know all know he just he just might be the merge boot here target because it just he's too good <laughs> I do love that so can we can we tell the viewers the hot goss about the the gamer headset? Yes, please sure. do, Kylie. So if you are familiar once again with the Hera Dunes, um, then you know that Sean Hunter had a big target on his back because of his gamer headset. And by who, Kylie? <laughs> by me. <laughs> <laughs> but Selkirk bought him the headset and gave it to him for his birthday. So crazy! What's going to happen? Well. Well, not what will happen? Game, so. I will not be in yeah. the game, so well, maybe nothing. Will what happen. will happen? Will that curse continue? Will he be pre-merge, the merge boot, or, the merge boot. <laughs> or deep run? I'm going merge boot. But also, I don't know. I'm conflicted because I want to say for like consistency's sake that he's the merge boot, but also like he doesn't really fit that bill as much. But I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to say merge boot, but just know I don't think he's going to <laughs> I think exactly what you were saying earlier, Alex. He is early. He's either out really early or he like sweeps through the game and maybe makes it to the end like really unnoticed. Yeah, like I, I think ultimately I, I see his upside at the moment before we see anything happen. Is sort of like that Greg Davidson, like get to final seven, final six. And then it's like, 
he has ran out of people that were rocking for him. Yeah. And then it's sort of just like that easy, like rocking oh. or like rocking, because like <laughs> you never know in our minis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're rocking to whoever them Canadians are listening to these days. <laughs> idea. Amazing. Well, thank you, Kylie, for joining us for these couple of people, and you're great. I love you guys. Thank you so much for having me. It was so fun. I can't wait to watch. It's gonna be a great season. All right, we are going to move on to our next guest. For our next two uh, contestants, we have a great guest here with us, a member of Prod, also on Exile. He screams, you fucked us. It's John Milsef. John, come on in. Yay! <laughs> Hello, everyone! <laughs> and we didn't fuck you over this time, John. You get to talk about two great contestants. The first one we're talking about is Austin Garso. He's 26 from Green Bay, and he is a graphic designer. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about these two contestants. Austin, I've actually had the privilege of podcasting with. McKenna and I had him guest when we were talking about this latest season of Australian Survivor. So I do have a bit of insight into Austin as a person. He definitely knows this game. He not only understands like the american version of survivor but he's watched all of these international seasons he is someone who understands what goes into a game can analyze it the question then becomes can he take his analytics and apply them to his own game as someone who's never played an org before Mm -hmm. but you know I, i think he's i i think austin He's a bit more of a soft-spoken person. He strikes me as someone who is very observant. He's going to be sitting there in the background a bit. He's going to take a look, see how everyone else is playing the game, probably lay low for the first little votes, and then start realizing how people are approaching the game and how he can use their approaches to his advantage. I completely agree, John. I think, I mean, he even says it in his interview. He knows he's shy, but I think that's, he knows that's going to be his first hurdle. And I think that's going to help him in this game. And because I think these other people that will be more timid aren't aware of how it'll affect it long term like he does. I do see him wanting to make strategic moves early on, but maybe struggling with the scramble rooms, getting in the right one or waiting for the right opportunities that often don't present themselves in this mini format. So that's my only fear for him. But I do think the later he gets to stay in the season, the more dangerous he is. And just like you said, he could take it and run. Yeah, being, being a student of game, he, he may not know like how we do like our twists and stuff like that but i feel like he is someone who has a good head on his shoulders could figure out some of our advantage clues which could benefit someone who is quieter uh my biggest fear is just that like there's one thing of being self-aware and knowing your weaknesses is actually knowing that like you said with knowing the game and being able to apply that to your own thing is knowing your weaknesses and then figuring out well, how do I hide those weaknesses through other strengths? And it's sort of hard to hide being shy, like being the soft-spoken person. But it's not like that hasn't helped people in our games in the past. Like we see uh, Michael Riley has gone deep in multiple games of ours now, and he's not the big vocal person. He's even with his big bass and his voice, like he... He is quieter, like he is more lean back, more of like not a beta in the bad sense, but a beta is in like I will follow as long as it's not me. And I think if Austin can take that approach and allow like maybe some of his game knowledge ego potentially go out the door and let himself like I understand the early portion of the game, find someone who's vocal, find someone who's a leader, attach yourself to that person immediately, then I think he could do very well. I, th- I think if he doesn't attach himself to the person who becomes like the here to leader of his original tribe, I think that's where you end up having that uh, downside of could be the first boot of his tribe if he can't make that right connection. Yeah. So one of his pet peeves, he says, is slow drivers in the fast lane. So that leads me to think 
he wants to cut those slow drivers and like just get rid of them in the game keep those keep the people kind of using a Mr. John Millsip strategy of keep the threats, keep the game going and keep pushing forward. Because if he's using the meat shields, then he, then Austin can fall more in the background and there are more people to, to gun for instead of Mm -hmm. him. And you might find him in the final five. So I think using the cut the stragglers strategy could very much benefit him i i will just i just want to say and i know like not everyone will agree with me on this the meat shield strategy isn't the most optimal strategy to use there's a reason why jeremy's the only like if you talk about meat shield strategy you only think of jeremy collins like because that he was able to pull off what so many people couldn't do and it was because of a very specific season Mm -hmm. that it was designed for I think it's more optimal to do a back and forth approach of you get rid of a straggler, you get rid of a bigger threat. You keep teeter tottering, but ensuring that you're in between the right mix. Because right. if you take too many stragglers out and you're the soft spoken person the final trouble, and all right. the big threats are still there. And guess what? A lot of big threats do get scared about going after big threats. They're going to look at you. Mm-hmm. And like, that's my nervous energy there. It's like, does no, totally he does he said. pull this off effortlessly and then goes out eight? You yeah, know, yeah. Like that's no, it, that's the fear. And like the other thing is when you're trying to implement a meat shield strategy, you also need to be one of the larger threats, and that's really hard for some of those more soft spoken contestants to pull off, where they're respected as much as the other people who are being meat, shield, meat shields for them. Otherwise, they get targeted by the meat shields. So I think what Austin really needs to do here, he needs to approach this game and not overthink things, which is something he says in his application is that he does overthink everything. When you're in a mini, you don't have time to overthink things. You need to work on instinct. So as long as Austin can get through the first couple of rounds, either by winning immunity or just navigating a first vote or two, I think he's going to find himself in a really good position, but there's still that major risk that if he doesn't get into conversation quick enough, if he is too busy overthinking things and not saying things, he could find himself as one of the first two boots in the season. Yeah. So with that, let's put your money where your mouth is. Will Austin be pre-merge, merge boot, or take a deep run into this? There are a lot of big personalities on this cast. I think Austin does have Michael Riley upside. I think we're looking at a deep run here. How about you, Lily? I I like can't decide. I don't want him to go out pre-merge. I think there's a chance. I think he goes out around the merge, whether it be right before or right after. But I don't think he is the merge boo. Awesome. Well, we will have to wait and see. (laughs) But now to our next contestant. It's Lee Farrell. He's 34 years old. He is from Kentucky, and he is a college data administrator. John, what are your thoughts on Lee? Lee strikes me as someone who, if he plays his cards right, can be very strong in this game. He has a lot of experience in orgs. He hosts his own orgs. He understands the mistakes people make in these games that can make him go. But he also, self-admittedly, in games, is more of a chaotic player, someone who's willing to lie to literally everyone and someone who Mm. can't be trusted. So if he goes in to this game, knowing that's who he is, playing that way, and isn't able to gain that trust, it could spell disaster early in the game for him. 
I 100% agree, John. I wrote down plays a character. You know, we don't see people play characters often at DCP there. And that's for a reason. They're hard to pull off. It's hard to stay a consistent character that's not you for a long time in the game, especially when it's focused around chaos and lying. It's great for TV, but it's not my type of character. And I think a lot of people in this cast will feel that way as well. So I think if he gets caught kind of playing this character, early on then I think he's a he goes out early now given everything that John mentioned he's a veteran he's played a lot of games he hosts his own org he might be able to pull it off more and this might be the first time we see it but I think that also being a host gives you dirty knowledge that can hurt your game in the long run for sure and again uh, Lee is another friend of mine that I met uh, through uh, these pandemic years uh, through the org community. And I'll say like, he's the op in real life. He's the opposite of what like his game is. He is a like die hard loyal friend for the people that he rocks with. Like he will go to bat for you regardless of what's going on. Like, he he is a pure like hearted man like very good person to have in your corner uh he is definitely someone who amps up some chaos some lie or not afraid to lie if he needs to lie uh i've seen it in games that he has played like he even goes to the point where he's lying to uh the people watching say he's gonna do a move and then like he's like well it was true at the time and then changes his mind and goes in a different route so it's like a wild card in a very fun way but he will even self-admit, like, there's a lot of games where he goes out pre-merge, but he's one of those dangers where if you let him get to the merge, it's probably because he has some really tight allies at that point. And then they're going to run, like, rough shot through everybody. And he's someone who's very good at challenges. He's very good at developing very hard challenges in the games that he runs. So I feel he could be someone in the early portion of the game that the tribes will find useful because I think he's going to be that person who could take charge and be like, this is the optimal way to get this done. These are my strengths. If we can get to this point, I can win us the challenge, like that type of bravado. Um, and you wouldn't expect him, like, like if you stereotype people, you wouldn't expect them to be like sort of like a hidden challenge beast but he has that full capability of being one. So it's one of those, if he can be chaotic, but at least just get to the point where it's individual, I could see him making a very deep run into this. Does he win? Who knows? But I think no matter what, we're going to be entertained. <laughs> yeah. So um, we did ask uh, contestants in the application just to see what their answer would be. Um, and his answer, was very interesting to do you like two or three starting tribes and he was like heck it give me four five like he i can't hide in a tribe so i don't want anybody else to be able to either and damn like he is confident in his skills but i i, I don't think he's too confident in his skills i think he just is very self-aware and Yep. is able to read his position in the game where he wouldn't get majorly blindsided. He might like think, I think I have the numbers, but you know, you never know. I don't think he would ever be like 100% confident and then get the rug pulled out from under him. Yeah. And I think he also could be someone who's a contender of figuring mm -hmm. out uh, advantage clues Mm -hmm. uh, because of his experience and as, also as his experience as a host. Yeah. Uh, granted, his game doesn't really involve that type of advantages because it's more of the mold base. Mm -hmm. But hey, maybe he'll be the mold this season. Who knows? <laughs> We're changing the game. <laughs> but with that, will Lee Farrell be pre-merge, merge boot, or have a deep run in him? I want to have faith in Lee. I want to believe that he can make it far, but I'm going to have to go pre-merge. I 
also want to say pre-merge. And I think I'm with Alex. If he gets to the merge, then I think he goes far. But I think it's like a Simmons in Exile Island where he gets voted out right before, again, a robbed god, robbed goddess um, <laughs> yes. of, <laughs> of the season. Because um, I think anybody would be crazy to take him to final tribal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he, I think, is another person who will very much own his shit at the end if he can have the opportunity to express it. And it's another one just will the jury respect it, even like depending on what he had to do to get there. We'll see. I will be rooting for Lee as a person. Mm-hmm. As a host, I have to be impartial. Yes. Uh, but I would love to see Lee make a good run at this so that we can get fully content <laughs> and no one truly knows what it means until you see it yeah it will be really interesting to uh see how lee interacts with this next castaway that we are going to be talking about Alrighty, we are gonna bring in our final guest he's no stranger to dcp he is the host of our long games mr ian moorhead What's happening, everybody? <laughs> Glad no, to have you here over on the mini side of things. Glad to be here. Who are we talking about? We are talking about our only returning player here, Mr. Mike Rick. <laughs> yes, yes, Mike Rick, the, the man of three first names, Mike Kevin Rick. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, I hosted Mike in Survivor Monte Carlo. He is, in my opinion, the most straight up villain we've ever had on uh in dcp not only is he a villain when he plays but once once he says something that he's gonna do he does it whether it it really works or not um i remember when we did his uh, cast assessment for monte carlo he talked about how you know he was gonna do all the lying and like he had no problem with it and i think within day four or five of the game it was very evident that that's what he was going to do and you know it worked I think most would agree that like Mike while lying is a very good social player like he finds himself able to talk to anybody about everything and anything um so yeah I'm really interested to see how he handles the the quick game format that we have yeah I completely agree I think Ian like hit it on the mark he is one of our biggest villains and with that like he has a lot of tricks we saw in his season you know he does things where the other castmates were like I've never even thought that people would try this not in like a bad way but just different ways to try to convey the information you want people to believe which is harder in a mini and so I think he's going to do really well he did well in challenges which helps in people's games in the mini. And as Ian said, he has the social and the strategic. So I could see him making it long term if his alliance members stay in the game with him. I think as soon as they go out, he quickly goes out right after them. He's not one to be able to bounce back after that. Yeah, so a few things with Mike. Uh, One, uh, to my knowledge, Kylie will not be in this game, so he will not have, to, from what I can tell, a known connection that will be ride or die with him. Uh, I don't think that will truly matter. Like, I think he's a very charismatic person who could get allies very early on, and I think he will need to rely on that because if we go based off the uh, tribal phase of the long game, uh, he was one of the reasons why his tribe kept losing. Uh, so that could go against him despite the caliber of player he is. Like if that happens again, it's an easy excuse for people early on to be like, oh, just get rid of the person who was the worst challenge performer. And then that's where he's going to have to amp up his lie game. I am interested though to see uh, how he goes about this game because he says for the mini, he wants to try and approach where he's very calm all the time and doesn't get worked up because he feels a lot of players in a mini phase, especially in a scramble uh, round will get more hectic, get more crazy. But if they see him being relaxed and calm, maybe that's a good presence for them to be like, Oh, I need to be around this energy. Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested to see that tactic from him to see if he's able to pull it off. And um, 
hey, we love a good villain. McKenna gave him uh, freaking uh, theme music for all of his confessionals. <laughs> I so <did>. <laughs> I, I would love, I like, I sort of don't know what the theme music will be for this season, but I sort of hope she it just brings that right character. back in. It all depends on his character. Listen, if he doesn't try and become the mob boss again, then he doesn't get his mob boss music. Uh, <laughs> so I am I am excited to watch Mike play this uh, this short form game because he is a huge social player and like giving Mike a day could, you know, flip a vote in his favor, but giving Mike a half an hour that doesn't necessarily work in his favor. And with the added pressure of you really need to do well in the pre-merge challenges and he does not, <laughs> I, I worry for him pre-merge, but if he hits that post merge, like watch out. <laughs> yeah. But I with think, that, oh, sorry. Uh, I was just, no, I was just going to say, I think like one thing uh, that Mike could take advantage of is we saw him do it in Monte Carlo with the mini round is if people are playing scared, Mike will, Mike will eat that up. He will push people to vote one way and know that they will follow because they're not doing anything. And he does not play scared ever. Um, we might see him, like you guys are saying, with the pre-merge challenges, those, if he screws up one of those, we'll probably see him sit back for a little bit because we know that, you know, he knows the game. He knows how to maneuver certain situations. Um, but yeah, I do look for him to at least one time in this game, if he makes it to merge, kind of prey on the people who are playing, you know, playing back a little bit, not trying to make uh, big moves. So. And I also think he's probably our most likely person to be our, like, next coming of Garrett in the sense of lying about an advantage and making an elaborate story about how he earned it at a <laughs> tribal. Like, hot Mike, just be like, hey, everyone, uh, before we vote, I know I'm an option. Uh, I'm going to play this idol right after we vote, so... Have fun with that. I mean, spoiler alert, if you have not watched Monte Carlo, please go watch Monte Carlo. But in an episode where he's insanely vulnerable and he, he makes up this lie that Will gave him a legacy idol to try and scare people away. So he will, if his back's up against the wall, better know he's pushing off. <laughs> so in a, in a mini, that could work. In yeah. A long yeah. Yeah don't necessarily have a chance but we saw it i mean garrett made up the most unbelievable story of all time and it carried him for a little bit <laughs> it carried yeah. him all the way to final three unlucky yeah. for garrett it was a final two <laughs> yeah uh but with that with mike uh is he gonna end up lillian ian pre-merge po deep post-merge or merge boot this is a hard one for me i think this is gonna be the hardest one for me to assess yeah, I think a player like Mike, now I'm going to try and work around your question here to begin with, Alex. <laughs> so a player like Mike could be, I think there's times where you can get him out in the game. It's the first three boots, the first three merge boots, or that's it. Like once, once he makes it past those points, like you won't see him go 12th to 10th, but you could see him go 10th to 8th. If he makes it past 8th and gets into like final six, good luck because there's a good chance he has, he can win an individual challenge. There's a good chance he has a number one that like he's kind of working himself. So yeah, I, I am going to say that I think he'll go early. Um, I know we passed out the last mini. Uh, if people really are doing their homework, they'll have watched, might've stumbled onto Monte Carlo because it's airing as this is about to, you know, film. So I could see him being, you know, thought of as like, Hey, we know his game or we've seen his game. Like let's, let's get him out. But you know, he is social enough to where I could see that not happening, but I am sadly going to say that Mike is one of your first four boots. I think I would go merge area. Um, to be honest, I forgot that he was not good on the tribe games because all I could think of how was he won those back-to-back -back other challenges. Mm -hmm. So I think just like Ian said, if people have watched Monte Carlo, they're going to not remember that he sucked on the tribe. They're going to remember that when he was vulnerable, he won. And so I think that will make him a threat if he gets to the merge. And I don't know if people will let that slide. Well, 
only one way to find out is to tune in to Trinity Falls when it airs. But thank you, Ian, for coming on. Uh, we knew we wanted you to be on to uh, assess uh, Mike as being his former host and handing him off to us. Uh, we'll try to take good care of him. <laughs> yes. Hey, I mean, despite what I said, I think he's going to do well and I'm excited to see him play. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and that wraps up this cast assessment for trinity falls i'm so excited to see these 15 people come in and play their hearts out and get a new winner for our fifth mini coming up we will be having the all winners fancy draft held by all of production it'll be a fun time uh and then we'll be airing this baby it's gonna be great Make sure you're following us on all of our social media. If you're not following us on YouTube right now, please click subscribe. Click the like button so that you know we can know that you like this video. Mm-hmm. And uh, press that bell for all notifications so you know when all of our new episodes drop. But with that, that's Lily. That's my co-host, McKenna. I'm out. We'll see you next time.